What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I'm here with the review for Love & Hip Hop Miami Season 3, episode number 9. And this episode was titled, Take a Bow. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into this video. Now, before I actually, actually before we jump into this video, I do know that Miami filmed their reunion Sunday. Sunday. And they invited Kendall Kendall to the reunion. I'm okay with Kendall Kendall. I think he's cool. I like him. He's, he's funny-ish. But if this reunion, if he's gonna do just what he did at the, at the Hollywood reunion, keep it, Mona. No. There are a lot of people out here who could do better than him. Like, hell, I didn't even say myself. Throw me in there. Ashley. Roxanne. You've invited her to a reunion before. Roxanne. Bondi. Alex. Keisha from um, Color Me Pink. Like, a lot of a uh, lot of people. I just don't understand what the purpose of Kendall Kendall is, but let's get into this video, you guys. All right, you guys, so before we, before we get into that, this video, you guys, Love & Hip Hop Atlanta returns on March 16th. Are you guys excited for Love & Hip Hop um, Atlanta? I am. So let's go ahead and just start this out. Um, I'm gonna start with the small stuff first. So we saw Joy and Trina. So they met up with each other. And you know, um, Joy asked Trina like, so what's going on with the album situation? Like, what are you gonna do with it? Trina's not necessarily sure what she wants to do with this album. Trina doesn't know if she wants to necessarily rebuild this album or if she just wanna record new music. I, on the other hand, I don't care what you do, Trina. Give us the music. Like, that's all we want is just, I think the fans will be okay with whatever you give us as long as it's quality music. Um, I mean, I really, 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 really would love Baps back because that is my shit. I fucks with Baps. I, you know, when that album came out last summer, I, 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 I listened to Baps every morning on my way to school, uh, work. Every morning I was listening to Baps. So yeah, give me Baps. Give me Baps. <laughs> give me Baps. So, you know, um, Trina's talking about how, you know, it's just a lot on her right now. I know she's still dealing with the death of her mother. And then, you know, looks like um, the, her mother's birthday was approaching. So I know what that feels like. You know, the first birthday that you had, your, first, your mom's first birthday and she's not there. I know that feeling. It was, it was a hard feeling for me because after my mom's birthday, it was a week later. And I haven't really told anybody this. I've told my family this. But I haven't told any, I haven't told you guys this because I, you know, I try to keep my personal stuff to myself. But after my mom's, after the birth, after her first birthday, not having her here, I fell into a deep depression. And this depression was, was a deep one. I have to be honest. It was a deep one that had me, oh God, I don't want to say it, but I'm, I'm not, I feel like if I say it, it might help someone. So I'm going to say it. So this, this depression that I went through, it took me to the point of um, being suicidal, honestly. I attempted to kill myself. Thank God I didn't do it. And, you know, thank God it, it didn't, you know, you know, it didn't go the way that I wanted it to go. But, you know, yeah, it, it's definitely a difficult one. It's, it's truly difficult to get, especially when, you know, your parents, because my mom died. She died in March. Actually, March 19th will be three years that she passed away, which is also my grandmother's birthday. And my mom's birthday is September 19th. September 19th. So she died months before her birthday. So it was definitely difficult for me. But, um, you know, so I, I understand what it feels like for Trina. So Trina will enjoy, you know, comes up with the idea that maybe we should go back to our home country. And I think they're from Jamaica, right, you guys? Are you from Jamaica or are you from um, the Bahamas? It's either the Bahamas or Jamaica. I think it's the Bahamas. Yeah, it's the Bahamas. So Trina's like, I don't necessarily know about that. And, you know, she's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go have fun. Me, you, Trick, and Bobby. She's like, I guess. But, you know, that's it. I, I, I pray for Trina. I pray for anybody who's lost a parent, especially a mother or father. I pray for anybody. Because that is the most difficult thing in the world to deal with. You know, like with um, Miss Kitty from um, Black Ink Crew, Charmaine from Black Ink Crew. Like, I feel for all of them who lost their moms. So, we're just going to move on, you guys, because it can get deep. And I don't want it to. All 
All right, you guys, so we finna just jump into this. Let's talk about Amara, Amara, Prima Donna, and um, Annie. So Amara met up with Prima Donna. <laughs> now, if you guys don't know, if you haven't saw it in the blogs, those two got into it with each other during the filming, just before the reunion, maybe two weeks before the reunion um, filmed. Um, I don't know what they got into it behind. I'm pretty sure it's behind this shit with MJ. Because, you know, Amara was, was sitting there, you know, having lunch with Prima Donna, but then Annie shows up. Now, I was like, you really tried this one, Prima Donna. Now, I get it that, you know, you want to keep her, you don't want you want to give Amara a heads up, but girl, this was not the way to do it. This was a bit fucked up. You look messy, just like your tacky-ass wigs that you need to burn. And then even Amara, needs to, I want Amara to burn that wig that she had on as well. Because that shit was ugly. It looked <laughs> It looked a little crunchy right around here in the in the in the in the um in the part area in the scalp area. It looked a little bit crunchy, but you know I love my girl nonetheless. So like I said, Annie shows up. So Annie begins to tell Amara her situation with MJ, how they were together for three years. She supported MJ with his musical career, but he you know when things got tough for her, he never wanted to get a job, and I'm just like, well shit, a man that don't work don't eat. Ever heard that saying from the Bible? A man that don't work, don't eat. Just putting that out there. But, you know, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. But, um, you know, I I do feel bad for Annie, but I don't feel bad for her necessarily. Like, when you saw that he wasn't about shit, the first, when you saw that he wasn't about shit, that should have been your clue. But, like, you know what? Let me let him go. But, you know, I don't know what any, maybe the sex was good. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Can't really tell you the truth about that one. So then we do see Amara. So Amara went home after this whole situation with Annie and Prima Donna. And she was upset, you know, about the fact that Prima Donna didn't bring Annie around, which I, 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 I gave her that. So, you know, Amara goes home. She talks to um, MJ. And good God of hell, that furniture in that house. What the hell is that shit? Burn all of that ugly ass, tacky ass, gaudy ass furniture. It, it, I mean, oh god, it just, I was like, really? What the fuck is this? So, you know, Amara is talking to MJ. She's telling him, like, yo, I met up with your ex girlfriend, Annie. She was telling me this and this and this and this and that about you. And, you know, what's so funny is, it's the same shit that I'm living. And I'm like, well, so you knew it. You just didn't really give a shit, huh? Because, I mean, the writings were, as Destiny Child says, the writings were on the wall. Like, the writings literally were on the wall. Especially when he said to you last week's episode that he wants to manage you. That should have been a big red flag. You're like, wait a minute, there is something so off with this dude. And they get into a whole argument with each other. And I'm sorry, but that was like a whole living telenovela. Because they were just going back and forth. And I'm just like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And when she told him, don't break my stuff. Don't break my stuff. When she did that, I, I, I'm sorry, but I died laughing. It was hilarious as fuck to me. <laughs> then MJ's upstairs crying with no tears. I'm just like, oh, this is what we're doing. <laughs> that was a horribly acted telenovela. It was a horribly acted telenovela. <laughs> Hilariously funny. I can't wait for my girl Roxanne to do her video. <laughs> I know she's gonna reenact that shit. I didn't feel like reenacting it, so I'm gonna let her reenact it for you guys. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So then we see MJ goes to his sister, and he's talking to his sister about this over, you know, thing the fact that Annie got on Amara's head about some shit that happened 10 years ago. I don't give a fuck when it happened. Uh, uh, you know. Just because you got older don't mean you, you've changed. It just means you got older. Um, But, you know, she said um, that if he loves Amara, he needs to fight for her. Should I fight for a meal ticket, too, as well? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you fight for your meal ticket? Like, come on. Let's keep it. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it all the way fucking real. You're going to fight for your meal ticket, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. You're going to fight for that meal ticket, but let's move on, you guys. Let's talk about 3GW. 
So we see Suki. Well, we see Chameleon. Chameleon is rehearsing. I don't know what the fuck she was rehearsing to or for. I mean, I know she's rehearsing for, but I'm like, girl. And then the Suki come in in them heels. Suki Hana is really embarrassing. Like, I mean, girl, you gotta know people ain't laughing. At, they're not laughing with you. They're laughing at you. Like the the level of embarrassment with that girl. Like, God, she is just embarrassing. And she's all the time I have, she's sitting on, you know, this this fat cat. What has that fat cat done for you? I'm just asking, what has that fat cat done for you? Doesn't look like it's done much for you. Um, so you know, Suki and Chameleon talk about how they skeptical about this whole thing with Alvin. Alvin! So then Alvin shows up, he tells him, hey, I booked you bitches a show. I'm like, you booked them a show. You booked them a show. Now, I could, I would go for seeing Hood Brat, because I like Hood Brat, but I just don't know if I would. You know, I actually, I, when it comes to Chameleon, I think Chameleon's ghetto come out because of Suki's over-the-top ghetto-ness. Cause I, 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 but Hood Brat is the main one that makes some sense. But when it comes down to Suki, that is a whole different level of ghetto, ratchet, Goodness. Like, I, I, uh, no. Mm -mm. So then, you know, they're talking about how Bobby is going to be coming on the tour as well. He's going to be their hype man. I'm like, wow. Bobby. 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 Cool. And he says he's cool with it. I'm like, oh. Okay. And we go back down memory lane, season one, when him and Bobby got into it on that first episode. So then we see Tip show up, and I don't know what the hell Tip had on. She looked really weird. Um, and she's like, so what's up with Alvin? And they're like, oh, you know, Alvin, he wants to be our road manager. And Tip was like, really? And I'm like, really, Tip? You talking. Says Sukiana's manager that ain't managed nobody. Okay, Ra Ali. And then, you know, she's talking about the party that, you know, Santana had. And how it was childish. It was childish. She's like, did he really invite me? They were like, yeah, he said bring her, which he actually did say bring her. But then I did hear some, I don't forget where I heard this at, but I heard, I don't know if this was on Check Yourself or what, but I heard somebody say that that um, production put that picture of Tip up, not um, not Saucy. So I don't know what's real with that situation or not. <coughs> All right, so we see the group, they're getting ready for their tour that Alvin is set up, and I'm just like, oh. Oh, so you know they get on the bus and you know Suki's like that's not a bus, girl. Get on, get on it, cause you can. That's what you can afford. If it's what you can afford, hop your ass on that shit and get the fuck out of there now. Now when they were driving, I'm like, are they going through the swamps of Florida? Cause like what the fuck? And then they make it to the motel. I'm like, oh, oh no 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 no. Now they had an issue with. It. I'm like, really? You got an issue with this? No. Nah. Me personally, I, I wouldn't have slept them. Ain't no way. Mm -mm. Mm. No, not at all. Not one bit of that would I slept there. I would have been like, uh-uh. I wouldn't even touch the floor. Actually, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't have slept on the floor. I wouldn't have slept on the bathtub. I wouldn't have done nothing. I'd be like, yeah, no. This is not going to work for me. No. No. So then we see them get ready for, you know, for the, tour, for the little tour that they got, and they go to this bar. I'm like, what kind of honky-tonk bar is this? And it's full of white people. Actually, it actually wasn't even full of white people. It was empty. It was scarce. I'm like, okay, you know, hey, you do what you got to do. You do what you got to do. But I was like, okay. Um. So, you know, they perform... And when Hood Brad says, do y'all want y'all nigga to fly y'all out? I said, oh, we're going there. Cool. Um, yeah, but you guys, that was, I mean, they all performed. A hot ass mess. But you guys, that was Love and Hip Hop Miami. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button so you guys know when I drop anything else. Share the video. Leave your comment. Share the video. And I will catch you guys later on. Peace out.